everyone and welcome to the third episode of The Chatter. I'm your host Alyssa and I'm talking to Dan and Jaylene today. They are directors, actors, producers, and just incredible representations for Jersey City and New Jersey. I want to, so I want to get to know a little bit about you guys. How did you get into the acting career? Well, um, first let me say it's a pleasure to be on the show. And representing the Bayonne, Jersey City area. We live together in Bayonne, so we love 14A and uh, all the surrounding areas. We got into producing and filming together about a year ago. Okay. And I had been doing it for about a decade earlier. Okay. But I think she's really just starting off, but probably at a higher level than I ever could imagine. She's got like a natural talent for it. Did you guys meet on a set? No, so we actually met at a job. I was a Spanish translator. He was a teacher's aide. And yeah, I remember my first day meeting him, one of the teachers that was in the lunchroom. She's like, oh, he's an actor. I'm like, okay, like, whatever. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. And then I think Thanksgiving. I sent him a message. I was like, hey, happy Thanksgiving. And here we are. We'll get it out there. Yeah. yeah. And that was five years ago. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was actually one of my, my first, like, paid gigs. I was uh, in the New Jersey Motor Vehicle Commission mm -hmm. TV commercial, and I'm super excited to like get into a Don't Text and Drive campaign, which I think is like a really cool kind of way to make a few bucks because it's a great message. And to open your career because yeah. you're right. just speaking to something that protects people, and people will see that no matter what. Sure. Yeah. Like I'd been working before that, but it was mostly paid in pizza. That was like, <laughs> hey, cool, this one comes with a paycheck, so let's do it. Let's get me all bloodied up. And paid in pizza is great in the beginning. What would you say to them when it comes to starting your career off? Like, what? how did you guys struggle towards that? Um, for me, it was a little different because he's been doing it for so long that for the past like four years, I've gone to so many film festivals with him. And I was always like the supportive girlfriend on the side. I'm like, yeah, go do your thing, talk to whoever. And I just one day I had the idea and I was like, I'm going to do it. I sent him the script. So I think. You know, going back to your question, where it's like, if you want to do it, just try it out. Yeah. You can fail, or you'll fail, but you'll love it too, yeah. and you want to keep going. It's and there's failure in everything. Yeah. So don't, like, the failure, don't worry too much about yeah. that. But for you, there's not a lot of female directors. What would you speak to that? I say just be a boss. Just do it. And who cares what anybody has to say? You know, if it's something you want to do and you have supportive people around you, then fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> great. But my sentiment is exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Just do it. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? You're always going to have those people that are like, maybe you should get a real job. I know you've heard that so many times. More times than I'd like yeah. to repeat. You know, but just do whatever makes you happy. I think more often than not, it's people that are the unsuccessful ones and mm -hmm. didn't go for it that'll try to talk you out of pursuing your goals and ambitions. And super successful people will say, hey, go for it. Yeah. You give it a shot. Like she said, what's the worst that could happen? And I'm a firm believer that experience is the best teacher. So absolutely, fail a million times, but that one time you succeed, no one's gonna remember your failures. Yeah, and like you said before we started the interview, just that, that one moment could be your break. Yeah, yeah. when that, you're not expecting it. That's it, that I remember. Um, I had a few questions about the award you won. You were just talking about it. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Oh, sure. Um, the most prominent one that comes out to me is right in Jersey City, one of the most prestigious film festivals out there. Mm -hmm. It was actually like one of the top 50 film festivals um, at the time in 2018, Golden Door International Film Festival in Jersey City. And what I didn't know later is they call uh, Jersey City is the Golden Door of America. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> Um, one of my films was playing there. I play a drunk pilot in a World War II kind of spoof. Okay. It's called Yellow Scare. Very soon it should be on Amazon Prime. We're just waiting for the official release date, which is a quick shameless plug. Go watch it. I'll, I'll plug it more. Check it out. <laughs> it's um, a narrow bridge film, which is a Bayonne Film Company. Okay. And yeah, I was afforded that great opportunity to play this wonderful role. And I also have a dual role 
playing the character's son as well, who's a 1950s great stripper. So I had a lot of fun. I got to improvise. I also got to stick to the script. Joe Welsky, who's a great filmmaker, was the director. And we had a lot of talented people. We even got to shoot at Tito Barra Airport, which was really cool. So I got to be like on set next to like the proper kind of aircraft for the time. So one of uh, the places the film first premiered was Golden Door, Jersey City. Yeah. So at Golden Door that night, we were just hanging out, and when the awards came on, I was just sitting back relaxing. I had a pint of whiskey with me, yeah. and um, I heard my name for Best Supporting Actor in a Feature Film, That's and it was like the best feeling ever. She's like tapping me, go up there. It's you, it's you, it's you. <laughs> and of course, I had nothing prepared, and I was just, just they put my arms up like, yeah, Jersey City, what's going on? <laughs> and it just kind of like this emotion took over me, and I was super excited. I texted my boss, I will not be there tomorrow because I'm going to party all night. And uh, that accolade, even though we don't, we don't do these things for awards. Yeah. You know, you do it for the art, you do it for fun, you do it to push your career. But like winning, it was just like, I think I needed it. I think at that point I was a decade in and I needed something substantial to like really say, hey, you know what, you're on the right track. Like when you see 11-11 and supposedly you're on the right track in life, I believe mm -hmm. stuff like that. I was I like, this, that yeah. 11 -11 make a wish, yes. touch blue to make it true. I had, you know, I had this tangible, beautiful award, and I'm like, wow, feature film at one of the coolest film festivals for my performance, and I just have to stick with it. That's amazing. That is a story that I feel like will go on forever. Even when you're making big awards. Uh, it'll, that <laughs> will mean the most to yeah. me. And Since it's famous, she'll be famous. Yeah, we've had some success after that, but yeah, that one sticks out in my mind, like, okay. That's the baby. <laughs> that's, that's the baby. So a major a major thing that's um, that people talk about is the lack of female directors in the industry. Yes. What's it like being like? What's it like for you to be a director? I love it, and I think it has to do with like my personality. I just love being the boss. Mm -hmm. I like, and I don't mean this in a mean way. I like telling people what to do. I don't like to be told what to do. <laughs> so it's like when you're directing, you're the one that's you're in charge. You know, if you don't like something, obviously you say it in a nice way, but you're just like, all right, can we do this again? This wasn't the way I had it in my mind. So that I love it. I think that just goes, that's just me. I get asked all the time, they're like, do you want to learn your acting? Do you want to be an actress? And I'm like, mm, maybe like a line, but nothing too crazy. I'd rather like just be behind camera. I'm like, you did that wrong. Let's do it again. <laughs> play it again, play it back. Yeah. <laughs> so I for for people who want to get into the industry and become an actor, actress, writer, producer, director, what would you say to them? I would say just do it. Um try it out. You know, if you don't try it in your mind you're gonna think, well, I could have done this. Um, you might fail, it might suck, but then you do another one and that one would be better. I've made so many mistakes with Carmen. I've seen Carmen eight hundred times. I'm like I messed up there. I should have like done something else. But now I know, and I told them that. Like with every project I do, I just want to keep doing better and better. Till eventually, it's like I mean, I'm always gonna mess up, but where I know, I'm like, you know what? I think I'm okay now. Mm -hmm. So I just try it out um, and surround yourself with like supportive people. I think that's a big thing. If you don't have a supportive, like we're both lucky that our family is extremely supportive of whatever we do. But you also need those friends that are like, you know what, you did this, I like it, but maybe fix this up. Maybe cast somebody else, you know? Mm -hmm. I think that's the, for me, I think that's the best advice. Best advice I would give to somebody just starting out in the business is do it for the sake of enjoying it. You know, yeah. if you want to be an actor, be an actor because it gives you like this sense of excitement. Yeah. I used to pretend to be characters, true stories. I would not answer to any other name besides Egon, who was a Ghostbuster, or Donatello, who was a Ninja Turtle. Yes. So my preschool teacher would have to call me those names for me to even respond. That's amazing. So I was acting without worrying about Instagram followers yeah. or big paychecks mm -hmm. or what my next role was. I just so if you're just starting out. You know, be the best artist, be the best producer, be the best director you can, and hopefully the riches and the success, materialistic things follows. Yeah. I think you should bring that back though, only being called those two names. 
just bring that. I'm actually excited. You were talking about a short film that you're going to be filming in next week or in the next three weeks? In three weeks. Three weeks. Um, yeah, A or B and D. Um, I love horror. Anything creepy, anything like How to Get Away with Murder is my favorite show. I love it. So that's just what I buy for my films mm -hmm. right now. That's just the theme that I want to keep going with. And Airbnb, Airbnb was an idea we came up with, I want to say last week. And we just went with it. Our crew, it's going to be because of COVID, tight cast, tight yeah. crew. But just make it as creepy as possible and just creepy. Like, I love that. Fucking creepy. That's I, like, it. Love it. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm so excited to get that one. And once it's completed, we'll send it to film yeah. festivals, and hopefully we have some good luck there, which we've had in the past with her film, Carmen. So I think it's important to also say for local people, our star, our leading lady in this particular film is Lorena Gonzalez. She's a Union City actress, and she's worked with us multiple times before. So shout out to her and our sound slash lighting slash everything imaginable guy, Joey Mosca. You are a true hero. Guys like you, Joey, are the reason indie film is successful. Shout out to Joey. That's so, so Joey's a good dude, yeah. He's doing everything for this film. Yeah. Camera, yeah. lighting, sound. We're going to drop a tag, Joey. Yeah. We will. I tag everything. <laughs> I mentioned that in the last episode. I'll tag everything. He was too. He was a big tagger and hashtags. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta let people know who the dope people are to work right. with. Yeah. Well, that's true. I and mean, they're talented people. and. We consider them friends as well, yeah. and it's you know one of those things like a collaborative nature. You know, mm -hmm. an actor may have a good sense for directing and vice versa, and we kind of take each other's ideas into consideration. Mm -hmm. I would never say no; it has to be this way. Yeah, and so that's that's the collaboration feel. You have to have that in order to produce anything good, in my opinion. Yeah. I think that's we were talking about that a couple of days ago, where it's like we were talking about the, the movie we we're gonna film. The short, and we didn't agree on like one of the scenes. And no. we have that. That's a nice way of saying it. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I don't want to do it that way. And he's like, well, I think this. And we were going back and forth, but then I think it's good to have that because mm -hmm. if we agreed on everything, especially when it comes to filming, it may suck. Yeah. You know, if I was just like, yeah, whatever you want to do, and he's like, yeah, of course, like, I don't care. Then it's like, you're not really, you're not really working together. Yeah. You're just, just creative flow yeah. with it. Yeah, and we've, it's important. Yeah, we've come at it sometimes for certain things. As a character actor, like I take pride in the performance aspect of it and try to get into the mindset of that specific character. So I think it's important for an open-minded director like Jamie, first time, well, actually now second time, female award-winning Latina director who's fantastic. Hashtag Jamie Nesperez. She's open-minded, and what she allows for is one for me, one for you. Yeah. So let me try the weird improv take because I think that's what's going to get us home yeah. and she'll say no stick to the effing script you're an idiot let's try it my way yeah. and maybe the third take is something in the middle if we have the time and our sound guy doesn't want to kill us yeah then we do it a third time or a fourth time or a fifth time and sooner or later you put it in the editing room and you make something wonderful yeah because yeah. I bet more times than not the idea that you might not have had but you figured out during the moment become something so great for the film. Yeah. Yes. It's cool. Sometimes in indie film, probably in major motion films too, with huge budgets, um, the scenes you thought were going to be funny turn out to be serious and vice versa. So, you know, there's some surprises in there. That's awesome. That's probably like the most fun thing to do. Yeah. I love it. I didn't think, um, actually, Lorena said this to us one day. Dan asked her a question, like, what she want to do and she was like I want to do what I love with the person that I love and I was like at that time I was like working at the dermatologist and I'm like I don't think all right sure like whatever and then when I started directing I'm like now I get it because he loves acting so much like that's his life that now that I'm directing I'm like I I get what you were saying I get it. you know like the working together not to you know but the working together it's like it's different yeah so I want to thank you guys for being on the chatter. I'm so excited to see what you're doing in the future, and I know it's going to be great. I, they are going to be successful just with their energy, the way they go about their work ethic, and the people they are. So I hope you enjoyed the interview. 
Check back in next Thursday for our fourth guest on the chatter. Have a beautiful day and come back and chat with us. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you.